very difficult to hang on to the muscle. And I, I have no, I didn't think that it would happen to me because you never do. You always think that you're invincible and, you know, I was an athlete before and I'm strong and I'll keep going forever. But it does get harder and harder and harder. So I have had to be really, really disciplined about my protein intake to, to the point where I feel like I'm having to force feed myself sometimes. But it works. You know, I'm on something like 170 grams of protein and I'm not a big person. And that takes a lot of eating. So that, that's the major, the major overhaul, not as high in carbs. Uh, I'm not a low carb person at all. I don't buy into low carb or keto, but as a triathlete, I was really pounding back carbs and now I don't, I don't need as many. So that's a little different because I really love carbs and, and I have to be careful about where I put all my you know, my eating focus because it's, it's the protein that's going to serve me the best. And I do get the carbs in, but just to not the same volume as I used to. Any, any big protein tips you give someone? A, any special tricks to get to 170? 170 is a big number. That's my number for the exactly. record. So, oh, it's, it's a big, big number. No, it, it is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I, I was a bit skeptical about 170, but it's, it works for me. I I do a lot. Of, I'm not a vegan vegetarian uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Just a lot of preparation. You just you need to be really really into planning in terms of just your grocery shopping and the types of lean proteins you get into the house. So I'm all about you know ground turkey, chicken breast. Uh, I do eat steak, but a lot of dairy and eggs as well. Egg whites, whole eggs. And a lot of Greek yogurt. A lot of Greek yogurt. Um, so much Greek I, yogurt. I eat so much so, Greek yogurt. So much. I, I mean, I love it, but sometimes you do get a bit sick of it. Like, I, I'll have to go downstairs tonight and get another bowl full of Greek yogurt to hit my hit my protein. And then I do use protein powders. You know, I, I, I stick it in my milk for my coffee in the morning. That gets me a little hit. And, uh, you know, another one in a shake after my workout. Do you ever uh, drink bone broth? I do not. No, no. Oh, I, I I'm going to change that. your. I'm going to change your world. I'm going to send you a link when this is over. I should put it in the show notes because I'll get a, countless DMs about this. So I started uh, drinking bone broth on the advice of my doctor, who is also the co-owner of my gym, and and now I live by it. It's basically eighty calories, twenty grams of protein. It's so huh. good. And it, and it tastes and, great. And what's great about it is because it's hot, it, you can, like, I'll drink it before bed, get another 20 grams of protein, and it's like having a hot tea before you go to sleep. Right, Amazing. right. Is it primarily collagen-based? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or, yeah. okay, okay. And it's, and it's great. I mean, so I, I have a couple of different ones that I take. I have a chicken one and a beef one that I really like. But that's become a staple of mine, just to get, you know, just to fill in some extra grams here and there. It's it's easy in the morning. It's easy in the evening. Yeah. Like you drink coffee in the morning. It's a really easy thing to replace coffee with. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm still drinking coffee. Like, oh, I'm not okay. giving that up. But I, I, had, a, I day had a moment coffee. there. I was, yeah, no, I was like, no, well, no. what do you mean? You're not asking me to give up coffee because that's no, no, a, no. a lot of people ask me about pre-workout. Do you take pre-workout for the, for the CrossFit? I was like, well, coffee, but, you know, that's all I need. I'm not giving that up. Yeah, no, I'll do, I'll often, I'll get up in the morning, have a glass of water, and then I'll make a, a bone broth, and I'll drink that, and then I'll have coffee after, and sometimes add collagen to the coffee, and right. now you're, you know, 30 grams of protein into your day before you've even really started eating, you know, it's just right. it's an easy fill-in, and I found even at this age, like, my body composition has changed really quickly by increasing my protein, and, you know, to your the same as you, like I'm not giving up carbs, but I've absolutely lowered them, you know, because yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm filling in in other areas and I'm, you know, not as concerned about, well, did I get enough carbs to go power through this workout? I mean, CrossFit workouts right. are 15 minutes anyway. So you, you know, you don't need a <laughs> bowl of pasta before a 15 minute AMRAP. You just don't, you know, you just need enough to get through. So while I do track the carbs, I, I, 
lean in on the protein. And it's amazing, right. even, at, even at this age, how you can change your body comp. Yeah. I, absolutely. And I, I think a lot of people find that hard to believe. So a lot of my followers are not CrossFitters, which is really interesting. They're, they're sort of women in midlife and a lot of them are not necessarily have been athletes or active previously. And one of the biggest questions they have, most common questions is, is it too late to get fit, change my body composition, uh, live a healthier life, be stronger? And I think that's one of the biggest misunderstandings about being in your 50s. It isn't too late. And, and that's the thing I love about CrossFit is I've seen so many people change their entire lives, never mind body composition, just from things like, you know, upping the protein or just changing their nutrition in general, going to a CrossFit class three times a week, moving more throughout the day, like getting up from the desk, going for a walk. It's, it's, it's not actually rocket science, but yet a lot of people find it hard to believe. Yeah, well, CrossFit looks hard. I think that's part of the issue. You know, I mean, it does. Like, it looks hard. Yeah. The problem, the, here's why it looks hard. We do Olympic lifting. And Olympic yes. lifting is very complex. Like, I've said this for a while. If they would get rid of barbells completely and replace them with dumbbells, I think they could get more people to join. And I'm not advocating that we get rid of barbells because I know people love it. I just think, like, the visual of people doing snatches and clean and jerks scares people off at times, you know, or turns it, them I off. Yeah, I think it does. And it is hard to learn. I mean, I'm four years in and I still ugh, get snatches so badly. It's so hard. And my cleans aren't fantastic, but they're better. I think, you know, so what a great thing for, say, people, you know, people of my age or in their sort of mid 40s, the master's divisions, is that a lot of the places like Mayhem and, and, whoever else, they will have master's tracks or they have tracks that are dumbbell only and they're functional fitness, CrossFit workouts that use a dumbbell. It's a lot more accessible. I think people in their 40s and 50s who've never done anything like this before would find it a little more easy to get their head around picking up a dumbbell. And and you also, you know, you've seen some of those movements like the dumbbell snatches making their way into everyday other workouts on YouTube. Right. So I think the shift, you know, the shift is happening, but I don't know that, you know, many of these people would ever get fully into CrossFit. Are there any movements as a master's athlete that you choose to not do because of age? I have, I have no. a few. That's why I'm asking. Oh no? yeah. Tell me, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. Go on. I, and this is personal preference. Uh, keep in mind, I, I'm not critiquing the cross. Like I firmly believe the CrossFit method works for everyone. My dad does it. He's 77, right? Like, you know, I think anyone can do it at any age and you can do any of the movements at any age, but I look at things and, you know, I, I try to decide what am I training for? And then what's the risk or reward? Right. And I, as an example, I look at rope climbs and the reward for being able to do efficient, quick rope climbs does not outweigh the risk of falling off a rope at 53 years of age. And, right. and so, so, so my thing is what I could get from that, I can do in other areas. I can right. focus on the grip or, you know, whatever, you know, the, the parts that you get from doing rope climbs, I can do other movements that are safer have less opportunity for injury and, you know, it's not to say there's no opportunity for injury, but it's just better for me. I also don't do a lot of muscle ups. I can do them. I learned to do them. And I do think it's important that, you know, even master's athletes learn these skills and understand them, but I don't do a lot of them. They're really hard right. on the shoulders, like really hard on the shoulders. And I don't have great shoulders. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, so I would rather, Focus on, you know, maybe, you know, chest to bar pull ups as an example, or strict pull ups and ring dips right. over, over trying to do a, you know, a real overly heavily kipped ring muscle up and then find myself blowing out my shoulder. You know, it's just so, and that's just, again, personal preference. I just have found those things better for my body, you know, and so I, that's, I try to. Yeah. You know, I try to encourage master's athletes. Like if there are things that you don't like to do, like the whole point of fitness is to enjoy it and to live a healthier life. And so don't like keep running into a brick wall and knocking yourself out. Like 
go find something you like to do. You can always you can always scale it and sub something and still get the same stimulus. That's that's an interesting way of looking at it. I I think for me one of the because I've only been doing this for four years and unlike you I have not got my muscle ups. I'm still motivated to beat that thing. So I want to get a muscle up. I want the satisfaction of knowing that I finally did it, not just because I'm 53, but because it's a hard skill to master. I, you know, I, I never, I didn't even, I wasn't even able to RX my handstand push-ups until after, actually after I sh dislocated my shoulder and I started working with my coach, my one-to-one -one coach, he had me fully to the floor at that point. So up, up until then, I was to the ab mat and a plate, and I finally RX'd it. So I believe that I can probably, I can get all these things. So I do still want to attack something like the muscle up. I still, I can do a rope climb, but I want to get better at them. So I think that's my mentality is I don't feel that I've beaten it yet. And in my head, in my head, age doesn't come into it. I, you know, I guess maybe because I've watched these masters at the medicine at the right. games and seen them do this stuff, and I just think, well, they're, they're, that's not a limitation. My limitation is my my lack of skill right now. Yeah, I think that's fair. I don't, uh, I don't encourage people to not do things. Like I got my first muscle up, I think, at forty seven or forty eight, maybe, or first ring muscle Amazing. up, and and I didn't think I would ever get one. You know, and then I got pretty good right. at them for a while and, and that's, that was fine. You know, like I enjoyed doing it and, and learning that skill. But when I look at the things like I really want to accomplish at this age, it, it's not top of my list of priorities, but it was for a while. So I completely understand that sentiment of, Hey, I've never done that. I want to go right. do that. And that's yeah. part of the fun of CrossFit is like beating that challenge, you know? Yeah. And, and I think maybe, you know, maybe if I do finally get my muscle up, maybe I'll stop wanting to do them all the time or just have that thing in my mind if I, I've got to beat that thing. Now, the, the, other, the other consideration to your point about the risk versus reward is, is my shoulder. You know, I, I dislocated it and it's a year and a half ago. And so, you know, it's always a little questionable whether I will be able to ever do all those things to the level that I was doing them. I'm not even back to full kipping pull-ups yet because I, I subluxed it again back in this March. And so it's, it was a little bit unstable. So, you know, I just, I just play it by, I play, take it month by month base, you know, I base my goals on where, where am I at? How do I feel? And do I feel like I want that badly enough? In fact, I was talking to my coach today about maybe we'll try out high rocks. I, uh, have, you know, you I haven't done, have you haven't done one. Haven't done one yet. No, we don't. No, oh. we don't have them in Canada yet. It's coming. It's coming to Canada, but they they've never had a race in Canada. So I figured, you know, if if this thing, this shoulder doesn't cooperate on snatches and and you know all the other stuff that's shoulder intensive, maybe I'll give it a bit of a break by doing high rocks for a little bit and see what happens. So start running if you're going to do high rocks again or at all. I'm hoping the muscle memory from being an Ironman triathlete sort of uh, comes back. Right now, it's not looking great. My my run splits aren't fantastic, but I, you know, I'm hoping the muscle memory from 20 years of triathlon will come back. Who knows? They threw me into one. This is a true story. I went to Chicago. We were covering one for the podcast. Nikki and I flew up to mm -hmm. Chicago, and not gonna lie, might have had a couple of drinks on the plane. Maybe. Oh no. And and I get there and we're having dinner and a couple of drinks at dinner and the, the founder is sitting at the table with us. He like shows up and he's chatting with us. He's like, You're doing the race tomorrow, right? And I'm like, No. And he's like, No, you're doing the raids tomorrow, right? <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, I guess I'm doing the race. And same oh, as you. Goodness. I'm like, Well, I am like, I've run for years and I've done marathons and half marathons and trail races. I'm like, How far is it? He's like, It's an eight K but it's a little farther than 8K. You know, I'm like, oh, that's fine. It's only eight. It's only 8K. I'm like a typical crossfitter. I'm like, it's, and they're a thousand meter split. So I'm like, okay, it's eight rounds for time. That's what I was thinking. Right. 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 Did Easy. not feel like eight. It did not feel like eight rounds for time. It was so bad. So bad. Yeah. 
and everything's accessible and you, you'll probably blow through all the crossfit type movements the sled pushes the wall balls like you know farmers carries burpees all that stuff was like a no-brainer it's just a lot of running it, it is a it's a and it and it's added an intensity that you know will re, you can really push yourself over the edge to way too soon you know first three rounds you could just it, it, go over that red line and you're you're in a hole from then on yeah i didn't have that experience my experience was that i was really hung over and uh <laughs> I, I, this, this that put you through. in a hole <laughs> you, I guarantee you've had this experience before in a race you'll know exactly what I'm describing I'm about 3 to 4k in and I stopped sweating and I got the chills oh yes and I'm like, yep. I'm like oh yeah. I'm in a bad spot because I had a long way to go at that point I'm like I'm in a really bad spot and so I started stopping at every water station and just slamming water and Gatorade and whatever they had and i was fine i got through it just fine oh my gosh but it was a 